So I want to make just a quick video on this guy right here. It's in a pretty good sized pot. I upsized it since I first collected it. It's a wild blackberry. And this isn't just a normal wild blackberry. You see in the Pacific Northwest, we have a couple different blackberries that kind of just grow everywhere. But this is one of the only native varieties of blackberry. It's called the trailing blackberry. Some people call it the Pacific or the California blackberry. Um, I believe it's also called the dewberry. But it, its botanical name is Rubus ursinus. And it's a real small growing blackberry plant. It's, it's one of the trailing varieties, hence the name trailing blackberry. And it's really exploded since it broke dormancy and the flowers have pretty much all died off of it. I've got, let's see, there's one, two, three new stems kind of growing up off here and it looks like maybe a fourth smaller one down here in the center. The hard part about growing this particular species is that the flowers are, uh, what's, what's the word, monoecious? No. It's dioecious. Yeah, so basically it the flowers do not self-pollinate. They, they don't create their own fruit. Um, not even if pollen is carried from one flower to another on the same plant will it fruit. It's only going to have the female parts of the flower or the male parts of the flower. So it's either going to have pollen on it or it's going to have the part that needs to receive pollen to produce fruit. The ones with the pollen flowers are never going to produce fruit and the ones without pollen will only produce fruit if it gets pollen from the other plant. So I've got one flower left down in here and I managed to get a flower from one of the larger growing invasive blackberries that are perfect flowered, that do produce self-pollinated flowers. And I'm seeing if I can cross the pollen onto it, just kind of sitting it here shaking it around to see if I can't get it to produce fruit because I have heard that hybrids do really easily come up with this species, with the, with the blackberry species. And I'm not doing it to create a hybrid, I just want to see if it'll actually work to produce fruit because I want to at least you know taste one off this guy. Because it's going to be a while before I can get another, another hopefully a pollen producing blackberry, a uh, pollen producing trailing blackberry to kind of plant next to this guy. But uh, one of the easiest a couple of the easiest ways to tell the difference between this and the larger guys that grow out here, for example, the uh, Himalayan blackberry, is that it grows a lot closer to the ground. It trails, like I said. It doesn't produce very many upright stems like these. Ooh, there's a bee. These, uh, these guys here aren't going to grow that much taller. They're just going to kind of fall over to the ground over their own weight. This guy here has really sunken over since it started producing flowers. The second is that the, the stems here are all rounded, whereas the Himalayan blackberry it has sort of like a ridging along the, the canes themselves. The thorns are very small, very easily blunted, bent, or snapped completely off, and I have actually never drawn blood on these ones before. It's always been on the, the larger ones, so I really like how, how easy these are to handle co by comparison. The biggest, the two biggest things to notice to differentiate between them has always been to me the uh, the color of these canes. The new ones, they almost have, it's probably hard to see in this, but they almost have like a waxy kind of look to them that they have. And the second is the leaf shape. So if I come up here, kind of look at this, all Rubus ursinus only have three leaves on each stem. This never changes, but occasionally you might get something like this, or a better one over here like this, which looks like it has five leaves, similar to this guy over here, right? This has five sets of leaves on it. That's the Himalayan blackberry, invasive. Real pain in the butt trying to get rid of this stuff. But it's got five very well-rounded leaves. Whereas over here, this guy, it has three leaves, but this last one here is actually three-lobed. It's a, it's a single leaf because they're all connected right down here in the center. Whereas these two here come from their own little stems off of this, off of this guy right here. 
So this is still technically a three-leaved. It's just the, the primary leaf here on the end is three-lobed. Right, and all the rest of these ones are three-leaved. They, they don't have as, as much of a rounded leaf either. The, the serrations are a lot deeper on them. And that's another thing that you can use to kind of tell the difference. The leaves are also not, uh, not evergreen, if I remember correctly. They're more of a... Uh, they they kind of die off in the winter type of a thing. But they, they stay on, but they still kind of die. But that's kind of how you tell the difference between them.